Ah, we're back. We are back. It's been, I don't know how long since we've been together, Iggy and I. Uh, yeah, a little bit. June. June? Yeah, it's been June. Yeah. The whole month of July? Okay. We've been gone. I, I was only on with PC, right? I had Alliance games, Alouette games. Uh, you were, right, the yeah. day we were supposed to do it together, it was PZ and I, then Jerome came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's been it's been a while, like it's been like June. It's been like six weeks, and well, thanks week we see each other every day or speak to each other every day. Yeah, so. that was that's what really, I was just gonna say. I was just really gonna a, say a vacation from you and I. But uh, <laughs> all right, we're back, Iggs. We got two more shows to go in the spring season, um, and yeah. that'll be it for us. And uh, this is so for those who, who are curious to why we're doing a Monday show. Uh, Thursday did not work for others uh, who were not available, so we said let's do a Monday show recapping the weekend that was. And we'll do previews of the finals on Thursday's show. That'll be more in-depth for when we have our finalists confirmed for all the divisions. And so what we're going to do today, preview Div C, Div D, and Div E finals plus competitive. And we'll do a little bit of a glance on the recap of what happened for the other divisions as we gear up for the final show on Thursday. And, of course, the road show in Brossard, Iggy, which will be Sunday and Monday coming up next yeah. week or this weekend, however you want to term it as. Uh, lastly, before we get to the show, Eggs, um, fall season registration open. is open, ready to go. September 3rd, I believe, is the opening night for fall season. Uh, September 3rd, yeah, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday not the Labor nights. Day Monday. Yeah, yeah. that just says uh, FPF, like a Tuesday night opener for their season. So uh, <laughs> yeah, why not? Can't wait for that. So fall registration is open, so please, if you want to join for the fall season, it is open, different categories. Uh, not the usual Fall Cup format. You can read up all about that on the website, what it's going to be for the upcoming fall season. And then before you know, it's the winter, and we're talking about winter jackets and the whole nine moving forward here. All right, eggs, let's dive into it. And boots. And boots. Let's not talk about that. Uh, already we're in hoodies. Wait, wait, um, wait. There, there's something in between the uh, the spring season and the fall season. Mo. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Iggy's uh-huh. living. Iggy's leaving. So that's also out of here, too. No, no. We got the five-on-five oh, five tournament. Uh, August 18th, uh, five-on-five. Uh, weekend of August 18th, which is the weekend after the road show. Five-on-five uh, yeah. five tournament at Wager High School in uh, Coast St. Luke, Quebec. Um, for those who want to sign up, you can. Uh, there is a link on the FPF set, Iggy, that you can sign up. And it will be five-on-five yep. five rules, not your typical FPF six-on-six. Six. Uh, Want to get teams who are curious about it to kind of experience it, what it's all about. Uh, because, again, the five-on-five five game is growing exponentially at all levels of football across Quebec and in Canada. Iggy's confused. And Iggy is confused. Oh, Iggy's computer disconnected. Uh, I guess we can continue on here. Uh, Iggy's computer disconnected, and we'll continue on here as Iggy will reload his computer up onto the screen as he somehow fumbled it on the screen for those who are watching right now. And uh, we'll get Iggy back up with his computer in two seconds here and get this going in the proper direction that it's supposed to be right now. As he looks confused, Iggy. He looks very confused right now. Nervous. Uh, for those who don't see him on the screen right now. Um, Omar, do people see him on the screen and how nervous? There he is. The the, the voice of concern, the eyes of concern for Iggy. And uh, he now has his thing back up and running. Are, are we good to go now, Iggy? Are we uh, nervous again, Iggs? Iggy, Iggy's now good to go. Oh, no. Offside. Offside by our defense here. Uh, Iggy is now offside. We'll get this corrected. And... Uh, get this going through once more as we go through the formalities of what we have to do to get onto this room of ours for broadcasting. And I believe now Iggy should be good to go as Iggy, can you hear me again? All right, Iggy, you, yeah, you botched it by closing the box. You closed the, the, the uh, active box, didn't you? Huh? No, you, you, uh, you kicked me out, Mokon. Uh, just, just silently telling me you want me out of here. Why don't you just? No, tell I me definitely want you out of here. Uh, there you go. Um, August eighteenth, five on five registration. As I was saying before, Wager High School. Um, where are we at right now, Iggy? Seventeen, for, eighteen. Where, where are we at now, Iggy? For the registrations, uh, how people can sign up, and when the deadline is to sign up. The last day for the deadline is what for the registration time for five on five. 
Yeah, exactly. So first of all, it's Saturday, August 17th, Sunday, August 18th. It's a two-day tournament, so it's an all-week, uh, all-weekend uh, tournament. Uh, three games on the Saturday and at least one playoff game guaranteed on the Sunday. Uh, the deadline for registration is this upcoming Saturday, August 10th at, by 11.59 p.m. So you do have uh, today, which people, no one's watching it today, which is Monday. But uh, on Tuesday will be uh, one, two, three, four, five days left. From, uh, from when people are tuning into the show. Uh, five days left to register for the 5v5 tournament. Okay, so there you go. Five on five, not far away, and it's uh, growing exponentially, as I was saying before. So if you want to get a taste of it, here's your chance, uh, because FPF will be offering uh, more five on five leagues uh, in its uh, menu of options that they have for uh, whether it's winter, spring, or fall season uh, down the road. Okay, Eggs, let's dive into it, man. Um, we'll do the previews first here. Let's go Div C and get this going here okay. because we have games Tuesday night. Uh, we'll have our final pieces in place. I know you the pimps. Jagerbaum will play uh, 9 p.m. And, of course, at the same time on the opposite field, LPC against backfield penetration. So, Iggy, I'll ask you more of a, of a macro question before we get into these games here. Um, the team that needs to win this game, who needs to win this game more out of the four to kind of cement themselves going towards the finals who? Who needs to win it more to cement yeah. themselves yeah, to the like, final two? Like yeah, legacy-wise? Like yeah. Like because, franchise-wise? Yeah, because you look at it this way, right? I mean, all four have history in this league, right? Backfield penetration is one yeah. uh, championship before. Yager Recently, Bomber's been a, yeah. Yeah, Yager Bomber has been a long-time team, but they've not played in a while, but they did win before. Exactly. LPC's on yeah. the rise. I know you depends, you know, very well. They have been there, but have, you know, trying to get over the, the hurdle here, well, right? Well, they won last spring, right? Yes. They won last spring, right? So who needs this more in terms of the four teams to get themselves into the final on Sunday? I think I, I would say Jagerbaum just because of their time off from FPF specifically. Uh, it doesn't mean that like throughout their time off that they haven't they've like lost a step or anything. They're they're just as good as if not better than than they than they were here last time around. But it's been a while since the championship was you know had had their name under it right so to to get back into the final and get their name out there once again as as one of those heavy hitters as as they are already because no one the thing is they're there right they're they're the top four team but no one remembers the semifinal game right if, if bear they people barely remember the finals loser so you only remember really who won so they i think for them to get their name back out there as a one of the top teams in FPF in the middle divisions and, and you know, moving up to tier two in the fall, I'd say uh, out of the four teams, Jager bomb. But well, there's think, a case to be made for Pachikara. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think, I, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Jager bomb, uh, no, they've been, obviously, they've been away. They had a sabbatical for a couple of years, but they did have their run of dominance, right? They made deep runs in playoffs in, in years past. Uh, but I'm intrigued by LPC. That's who I'm looking at in terms of where they're at in their in their ascension because you talk about a team that has been now in the league for a couple of years um or what three seasons three years but I've, I've, they've always played multiple seasons in those years two years two yeah years. you know jason reyes is a guy that we know very well decent quarterback and what he's done this year but they, they have an arsenal of players right zach Cluche, michael fafal uh xavier bro uh laurent bonchamp these are all excellent playmakers on offense and then you look at the defense as well. I mean, they got dudes that can make plays, right? As you said before, the aforementioned and Pro and Kluge and all those guys. So I think for them, it would cement them because they have guys who have football experience. And if they do get to the final, and if they were to win it, it just puts them in that category that, look, this could be a team that if they stick in the league for, for years to come, like, uh, um, like teams before them that have come in here, uh, then, yeah, like Killer Race, for example. They can be competitive, and they can be up there in terms of moving up the divisions eventually down the road. So I'm looking at LPC as a team that, you know, if they do win this and they need to win this, it really helps their credibility moving forward as a unit ahead here. So we got the two games here, Eggs. Um, Idaho against Jagerbaum. So it's it's fascinating because it's different styles of play. Uh, Jagerbaum loves to capitalize on mistakes, right? Kind of soak in pressure and then... GF the Lowe's comes up with a big play as a last line of defense as the human eraser. And that's going to be fascinating is how does Idaho approach this game 
Uh, do they roll the dice and go deep here to test the, the back line of, of Jagerbaum? Or do they keep it simple and just play the waiting game out and just hope for a mistake from Jagerbaum on the defense side of the football? Yeah, it's it's very interesting question because a lot of injuries on the Idaho Utapim side. Marvin Steinberg got hurt last night in Division A. Jerome Hovington uh, and, and Brady O'Hanison are like the only two tr- truly legitimate healthy players who are kind of gassed from playing two sweaty games in Brossard last night. Uh, Alexi Ferra is on the team, was kind of that injury replacement with five games in case anyone got injured. He got hurt playing with Kamikaze and Coet too. And Gabriel Le Monde was hobbling out of the game. So there's a lot of injuries on the Idaho side. So maybe necessarily testing uh, Jagerbaum deep and catching them by surprise may not be the right way to approach this game. Rather, Keep it simple, move down the field, gain first downs, and and really frustrate this Jagerbaum squad. And and really the key is to not not get injured because another injury could spell the end for Idaho here. Well, I mean, it could burst the dam for them, right? And uh, that's something that even if they get past Jagerbaum, may not be healthy enough for the final. And we've seen it before, teams have come on fumes, which is mean which means uh, no able bodies to, to play healthy bodies to play at that point really hurts their chances. But I look at Jagerbaum and, you know, as, as Peace likes to call him, I always laugh, uh, Simone Duchesne. Yeah, du- Duchesne, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's one of the best names out of Duchesne. But, but you know, you look at Simone Duchesne properly. We'll go by the proper pronunciation of yeah. his name. Wonderful season, 45 touchdowns, 5 INTs. Uh, their defense, 79 yep. T's during the regular season. Uh, Jeremy Lavapatri had a good season rushing the quarterback. It's been a while. Uh, but if you cannot contain, as I said before, Jeff Delos, uh, Felix Fontaine Laroche, those guys can go off on anyone at any given time here. And if you give um, Duchesne that, that extra half a second to work with, he can punish you at all angles. No one talks about it. He's unassuming as a quarterback because he doesn't have the hoopla. Uh, doesn't have the, yep. the 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 panache, the the the, the bravado as maybe other guys in this division or across the league has, but he's a winner and he could definitely win this game uh, with what he does so well within his strengths of what he is as a quarterback. Yeah, and it's honestly these uh, these two teams have have met in uh, in in the MFL uh, leagues, and Jagerbaum has gotten the best out of Idaho in the past. Uh, and as stacked as this Idaho team is with Marvin Steinberg and, and Jerome Hovington and uh, Danik Kulum and uh, the list goes on and on, right? Uh, Jagerbaum has beaten them in the past. So, like, it's, 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 it's kind of a twitchy matchup. Uh, look, Idaho's coming off a great comeback victory over Trinity. Trinity had a two-possession lead with about five minutes left in the game and an onside failed attempt from Idaho, uh, after a touchdown made it a one-possession game. They got a four and out from the five-yard line, uh, drive down with six plays to win the game. So, uh, look, you can never really count this Idaho team out. It looked like they were down and out against Trinity. And just when you think, that, man, they can sweep in and uh, and from under the rug and, and pull out the victory. So, you can't count out. I can't count out Idaho. But uh, Jagerbaum has had their number in, uh, in yeah, the recent Yeah, again, year. it's it's going to be a, a game of, again, mistakes will always be costly, but who can be smart in their possessions, right? And and set up those traps to kind of get that deep ball in their favor. And, and I think Simon Duchesne can do that with his deep ball, and he's got a decent arm to go deep. Now for Brady, right, and how he runs his offense, it's going to be key in how he's able to withstand the pass rush. And to make sure that his ball placement will be in the hands of his team and not in the uh, black and orange of Jagerbaum moving forward. All right, so LPC, backfield penetration. Um, this could be one of those games, Ziggs, that first one to 40 wins. Uh, yes. And and like what I've said, you know, a few times for teams playing Gadot is you – if you can send a rusher that is just as athletic, if not more athletic, than Jason Rays, 
you have a good shot at stopping a lot of this. Uh, at least, I'd say forty to fifty percent of this offense because the 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 scrambling ability, not just to gain yards with his legs, but to gain time outside of the pocket, rolling and finding guys open. It's hard to cover uh, guys from the Pitskadat offense for you know four or five plus seconds out there in in the open backfield. So uh, if if backfield penetration, whether it's Xavier Kutsur or, um, you know, who I'm not even sure exactly who they can send at rush, but if they can neutralize that scrambling ability of Jason Rays, then the advantage does go, in my opinion here, to backfield penetration. Did you insult Raph Morelli? Oh, my God, yes. Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, no, you did. No, you team. did. No, 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 you did. You did. Because 18 sacks for the Italian Stallion, my friend, the Ferrari, yeah. the Lamborghini, my Jesus. friend. The Ferrari shape with the Lamborghini oh engine, my friend. That, no, that, no, 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 no. You, you threw, you threw Ralph Morello under the bus. Maybe you, you he, threw I, him under the bus. I, I feel like he hasn't played in a while. Uh, oh, and oh, so you're like, he's I, an, oh, you're saying he's an invisible player? He, he, he's a, he's a production type of guy. You know, one game, five sacks, nothing for the next four, four games. Volume player. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, yeah. Your face is turning something. red, man. You, you got caught no, no, no. red-handed, oh. my friend. We're we're gonna have to talk we're gonna have to talk about something after the show. Um so just remind me about that. But uh Ralph okay. Morelli was was not there. Uh no, yes, he was there at the game, uh Riders. Um yeah, uh then then yes, backfield penetration definitely have oh, an advantage. Man. Do they have the, the do they have the height to and it's just one part of their offense, but Xavier Bro is a winner in the air. Uh, is it Nick Gropini? Uh, that that can uh, kind of go man and man on man with him. Is it do do they have necessarily the height to compete with uh, Xavier Bro of uh, Le Petit There's one question they need to answer here. Well, they may not have to worry about that question because they have a pass rush. Okay. Yes, I know they do, and he's, he's he. And that uh, pass rush might didn't... alter the throws. Did he did he not win a uh, defensive player of the year? Or am I'm I letting, uh, I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. Okay, look, this is my situation for these guys right now. Um I don't yeah, look, bro's got he's six foot ten. He's like one Biyamba for the P- LPC, okay? That's that's what he is, okay? He's got one Biyamba like length, okay? But I don't discount Anthony Lazara, his physicality. You know, he, he uses his angles yep. really well. Uh, the Spranga yep. boys, uh, who are both playoff eligible, yes, they they same thing. They're smart defensive players. You look at Anthony Sija, he's not a defensive guy, but he's got a defensive mindset, coaching and playing football in the tackle level. He can provide a set of eyes from the sidelines for this defense. And then you look at some other guys, so, you know, the White Tiger. You know, if, if he does get his number called, he can match up with um, Xavier Bro and those one v ones. So I don't think. Their defense has to like, oh my god, we got bracket coverage blow. I think they're aware where he is, but they are smart enough to realize that okay, look, we're not gonna we're not gonna jump him, but can we beat him to the first touch of the football to make it tougher for him to catch it or to repel that ball away? If they can do that, then they're gonna be okay. And it starts with what their pass rush, Iggy. Absolutely. He's uh, no, no, no seriously, Rob Morelli is caught, man. Oh, I wish Pizzi was here, man. He would have ripped you to shreds. But it, it just so happened to be that I caught something else that we're gonna have to talk about after the show, Mo. So Fair enough. keep a keep a note when this show ends. We need to talk about something. Fair enough. Um, but yes, that that's a huge advantage uh, that backfield penetration have with uh, Rafael so there. So here's before. a question for you before we get to Division D: uh, Which Alessandro Barazona do we see on Tuesday night? The good one or yep, the bad one? Does it he, does it depend on the roster around him? Because right, like the the raw field, and they kind of sub in whoever's available that night. So is it dependent on that? I mean, he had a great he had a good game against Rico Riders. Has had a good playoff so far, but I don't know. I mean, he he. I mean, look, uh, the the latest track record is that he won Division Four A, right? So yeah, you got to go with with what you what you know late lately. He's been tearing it up, so you gotta you gotta think that he, you're gonna see the best of Barzoni tomorrow. You would hope so. He's like Baker Mayfield out there. 
He hates when I call he hates when I call him Baker Mayfield. But he is like Baker Mayfield, right? When when he's on, he's unbelievable. When he's off, oof, yeah. man. And there's there's a there's yeah. a pattern to his to his DNA when he's off. He would he tends to throw an early interception and that sets the tone for his team. So if he can lay off the cookies in terms of throwing that interception early and keep the steady diet of of making completions, that's when he's magnificent and and unstoppable. So I, I think the diet route. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to use that, you know, because you know it's in the summer, people are gonna go into the winter look eventually. Not saying Arizona is fat or anything. I think he's great shape, by the way. <laughs> Um, but if Barry can keep it simple and keep a simple diet yeah. out there of what he can do well with his passing options on the football field, it just makes him more dynamic. And and if he if he can avoid that early INT, and you can see it yeah. when he throws that early INT, it really sets you know a lot on his shoulders. Like oh man, I threw the INT, how do I get back on it? And he overcompensates. And if he can keep it simple, then backfield penetration has a really good chance to be LPC, I believe, yeah. on Tuesday night. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't. I, just to wrap it up, I, I, I don't think LPC's defensive coverage, depth-wise, matches the depth of the offense that the backfield penetrate. Uh, no, penetrators no, possess. but but it's gonna be it's gonna be. I think this game's gonna be first one of forty wins. I really believe both teams can score points, and and it'll be like a sugar rush of points that one of these teams goes on in terms of what they can do on Tuesday nights. All right, Division D, we got the final four: the Studs, Brewers, Glow Gang, Knights two point um, okay, so Brewers, look, they, they've really been a revelation, Iggs, because yep. the Brewers of old would be blown out by 45 points in all five plays. Now, here they are, fast forward to the final four. Uh, if yep. you had them prior to the season, the money line, yeah, you're making some good money out here. But look, oh, they, absolutely. But look, Alexis Labonte has, when he's quarterbacking, he's been great for them. They, they beat SP. They beat Jagger Bombers, uh, and they beat No Pun Intended. Um, all three of those opponents were probably favored in those matchups, and here they are in the Final Four. Um, could they continue with the Cinderella run against the Studs on Tuesday night, Eggs? I mean, I think so. I think both teams are very methodical in their offensive approach. They don't necessarily take many risks, but it comes with the rewards of, of completions and sustained drives and touchdowns. And I think that's the, the one thing that Brewers were always missing was that stability at quarterback and that understanding of the game. And that's what Alexis Labonte brings to the squad. And he's brought on a few athletes. Uh, you know, they brought on Devin Glover, uh, I believe, in the, from the winter season. Uh, added Avdal Martin, uh, a good defensive and two-way player uh, to the squad. Added, uh, is it Mickey Menza? I believe a physical, yeah, uh, yeah. big size, tall player. So yeah. they they added key pieces in the right areas that they were not necessarily, uh, you know, excelling at in the past. And and here you are with with the semifinal result. It's it's been really, really uh, impressive to see. Uh, I like Pease would would and and I agree as well. Like loves to see the the progression and the success that they're having. Uh, I'm stoked for them because season after season of failure, it was about time that they they see some success and then they must be having a blast. Honestly, they're like the Detroit Lions at FPF. They really are. Yes, right? yes, you know, they, yes, this, yes, yes. It took them a long time to get to where they are, but yeah. but now they're going up against a, a quarterback in, in Philippe Gillen now, who. Quite rich in the taste, right? Like he, he throw a lot of touchdowns, but had a lot of sacks, a lot of ints, and those aren't their uniforms, by the way. They have much better looking uniforms now. Nice teal yes. uh, that they yeah. have now. So these are like rag attack uniforms that they were wearing in the photo that we took back in May, whenever that was. But I don't. So the studs aren't going to score forty five points. That's not how they're built. They're, no. they're built to really be methodical, no. slow it down, and really go at a at a at a um, slow burn pace. And I'm just curious, can they get this to be at a slow burn pace now moving forward here? And can they really force Brewers to play to their style of, of action? And if they can't and get to attract me, Iggs, uh, this might fear the Brewers and win this game going away. So, like I said, I think both, <laughs> both teams have a very similar offensive style. It's not flashy, but it's safe and effective. And... I think the defense. I think I think both teams are actually built very similar on both sides of the ball. They rely on 
four, maybe five touchdowns a game <clears throat> to win. To win, but they rely on interceptions to get their team and then put their offenses in good positions to score, so that they don't necessarily need to go forty yards for four to five touchdowns. Right. Maybe three drives are 40 yards, but then the other two are like 17 to 20 yards, right? So games get a lot of interceptions. Uh, Philippe Savard, uh, Tristan Grimel, four, uh, four Les Studs uh, mm. are, are key contributors on the defensive side of the ball. Not necessarily great pressure on the from the rushing angle, but Antoine Clément and Elliot uh, Vivien Tremblay get a lot of hands on balls as rushers. They don't necessarily get the sacks and put teams on third long situations, but they do make it, you know, third and 10, fourth and 10, because they do get, you know, a lot of, a lot of tip balls and, and balls batted down. Uh, I, I really think defensive game here, I'm looking at like a 28 to 26, maybe even an overtime game. I, uh, I see a very, uh, I know it's, it's been, no, but like as much as, as like the league and scorekeeper don't necessarily like overtime just for, administrative reasons for time and the shutting down of lights and all those reasons. Of and course, we don't get paid more than what we're reasons. supposed to get paid beyond overtime hours too. So <laughs> anyway, so but, from a dollar, from a dollar perspective, no, but from no. an excitement perspective, the overtime has been amazing. So it might come out to extra points. Who's willing to gamble yep. to go for the two point convert and stuff. I don't think, yep. I think the Brewers now would go for two points, like with Alexis Labonte yes. quarterback. Yes. Whereas the older Brewers yes. would be like, "No, we're going one man. We're not. We're not risking it. the whole way." Built. Yes. Not, yep. we're, we're not built yep. to do that. So, yeah, I, I think it could be high twenties with these teams here. I think it come down to yep. extra points and who can hit them, and also yep. this the, the dare. Who's got the dare in them to to maybe take a chance or two and not be conservative in yep. their offensive uh, um, um, plan that they might have on Tuesday night. So. I think this game may not be the most appealing in terms of the uh, style and profile that we want from from these teams at this point of the year, but they're, they're deserved to be here at this point. And if the Brewers continue the storyline, yeah. it, it is a great storyline to have going towards Roadshow if they can pull off this win and get themselves into the final on Sunday afternoon. Okay, it's the last of the Dip D finals and um, that we're looking at right now in terms of what we have left. Glow Gang Knights 2.0. So Glow Gang's had many renditions of what they've had. I know Desjardins was a quarterback many years ago. Now winning Vanny Cups mm-hmm. with Laval or a winning a Vanny Cup with Laval, and now here they are, eggs. Uh, Glow Gang new edition is 2.0 Knights 2.0. Uh, they have been impressive. Bruno Pravanche, I got to see him uh, earlier this season. He's played really mm-hmm. well at quarterback. Um, now here we are, eggs. Do they have it in them to perhaps pull off one over Knights 2.0, who've been very, I guess, they've been that uh, itch that you can't pesky. get rid of. Yeah, very pesky, very itchy that you can't get rid of. And Glow Gang, they've had their moments of glory too and what they've done so far this season. Yeah, interestingly enough, you know, like I, as we have been mentioning throughout the, the seasons here with Bruno Provence's uh, betterment at the quarterback position, the team was, was smartly built. And smartly built roster wise throughout the, the the regular season because they did get Tyler Stewart five games played and with Bruno Provence not there for their game against Hale Marty's, it was Tyler Stewart that was able to get them the victory, three touchdowns, uh not very many touchdowns, but enough to get them the twenty to twelve victory over Hale Murray uh, Marty's. Glow Gang, it's been a it's their the franchise is known for their defense, right? A, a, a steady rock defense that's able to create turnovers, get turnover on downs, and that's exactly what they did to Marty Friedman and the Hale Marty squad, limiting them to two touchdowns. Like, you're not going to win many playoff games scoring two touchdowns, but yet it was still eight possessions. Uh, eight, eight possessions. That would be a lot. Eight point, eight point victory for Glow Gang. So, look, they were very smart the way they built their of their roster they understood the fact that in during the summer people's availabilities are often limited smart to get Tyler Stewart the five games played will Bruno Provence be available for this game against Knights 2.0 I don't think it matters whether he's there or not because Knights 2.0 have been on that Cinderella run for these playoffs with Marc-Andre Reeves since the midpoint of this season 
they are looking unstoppable right now. The the only real team that gave them a shot, uh, at, you know, at, at at kicking them out here was that Snowden Delhi Deegans, as you like to call them, uh, a very highly contested and uh, and uh, questionable affair. They they might say in uh, in that over that classic overtime forty to thirty nine victory uh, that night. Super I know had, but look, they're a team that's on, on a heater right now. Scoring 51, 40, and 39 in their three playoff games. It's a team that can put up points, can create timely turnovers when they need it. And it's it's really a matchup of Knights 2.0 offense going up against a great Glow Gang defense. Okay, so I, I scored kept their game June late June, June 26. I remember it was studs against um Knights 2.0. Okay. And they lost that game by 16. It was yeah, unimaginative like lack of of cutting edge on offense, no spirit right. at all. Yeah, and I said this team's gonna get washed. And and since then, eggs. When you think about it, right now, um, they had a close one against Nice Two Point Oh in the rematch. Um, uh, sorry, Nice Two Point Oh had a close one against the process. So since that game, okay, they have won. I believe. Uh, I'm just trying to do the the the, the number in my head right now with uh, with um, Nice Two Point Oh. They have won one, two, three. Three and one, four, four and one, five and one. They're six five. and one. Six and one, I think yeah. now. Five of the, well, five of their last. Oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, six, yeah, six of their last seven. Yeah, six. And yeah, one. with the only loss that they had, uh, coming against, I believe it was. Uh, no punt intended. No punt intended, right? That was the loss they had June twenty six. But during that streak of being six and one, um, they lost to. I'm just trying to do the quick math here. They lost no punt intended. That's right. So they lost no punt intended as well. So. I think that they're on a heater too. I think they, that they found their rhythm here. Like it's no discourse for what they've done so far. And look, th- this is a team that you know with Reeves at quarterback, they've found better flow. And now you have yeah. to figure out, you know, a guy like Shaggy Saint Lot, who's been really good during the regular season. And they got decent production from the pass rush, and that's going to be key. Can they pass rush Glogang and Provence and force him to errors? If they can do that. The next two panel could be booking their ticket to Sunday's final in Brossard. Yeah, and that would come not necessarily from Saint, who has the most sacks on the team with four, but uh, instead Emil Decoteau. Uh He he ru- ended up rushing Adam Malinoff in uh, against Snowden, uh, and he he got a, a clutch sack in the overtime period, which eventually led them to uh, to a victory. He's the more athletic, speedier, may miss a flag <clears throat> here or there, uh, but definitely comes up with clutch plays at clutch times. Watch out for Emile uh, Decoteau uh, yeah, for a big play. That, that's going to be a good game tomorrow, I think, uh, in Brossard and how yep. that plays out in the Final Four. Okay, Division E, eggs, or we got our Final Four teams in our bracket challenge. Um, well, you know, freshman Excel, they've been rolling through. Uh, they they had one scare against Ayers, which they won in overtime by one. They got LPC Junior, which could be a final in its own right. And they got yeah. two squad against Baby Sharks, who took out the number one seed, Western, who were missing guys in defense of Western. They were missing, I think, four guys from that game against Baby Sharks. But now yeah. we got our final four eggs. And, you know, the bracket worked. A lot of players love the bracket. They, they really enjoy the unknown test of, of, like, hey, can we bust the bracket like the Stables did? Uh, on their side of, of the of the venture that they were on. And so we now we have our final four. Freshman XL, they've been flowing and going, my friend. They same thing, right? They've they took their 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 L's early in their in their uh, inception in FPF. Curves, yeah. And now they get LPC Junior. Um there's a lot of confidence on this uh, freshman XL team, Eggs. There there's no denying that they have the confidence, the arrogance in a good way. And this is a team that they love playing defense. They love to hunt and hound. And if if whoever catches the ball in the opposing uniform, there's about two, three, if not four guys descending on that ball carrier to make the play and minimize any yards after catch. Yeah, defense, they, they found, finally understood the concepts in flag and, and taking away, you know, or, or playing a good zone defense. Uh, they don't necessarily go man a lot, which they could. Uh, but they realized that, you know, maybe early on in their careers, they were going man too much and getting beat. All it takes is one guy to get beat for man to, to get broken, right? So they've, they've, they've improved on their zone defense. Uh, they get a lot of hands on balls, whether it's Keon Cyrus, uh, of course, Sam 
I, I realize I've been saying his last name wrong. I can't, I always said Anastopoulos. It's Anastasopoulos. Uh, now that I, I, I really Ask read PZI his name says correctly. His last name. Ask PZI How does he say his name? name? He just say it right. He goes, I'm right. I go, no, you're not. He's... I, he goes, I am right. I go, okay, cool. Whatever you want to believe, brother. Well, I, 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 I again, I always said Anastopoulos, and then I, I looked, because I'm reading the, the articles, and I'm like, it's Anastasopoulos. I'm like, oh, shit, I've been saying it wrong this whole time. But whether, again, whether Keyshawn uh, Gills, five PDs, Peter Burtz, uh, Iggy, there's an Iggy on the on the team. I don't know if you noticed them, uh, Mo. Um, and, uh, and, and, and Marcus. Uh, they, they've all necessarily like they play, they are big guys and they've been playing big. Hence, I guess the, uh, the Excel in their, in their names. Uh, and of course not, not just getting PDs, right? Uh, nine, nine interceptions for Keon, Sam with, uh, six and, uh, five combined between Marcus and Keyshawn. So like, there's a team that likes to take the ball away. Uh, they're, they're aggressive, but in a controlled way. They don't necessarily take a lot of penalties uh, for necessary contact, uh, but they're, they they get their hands on the balls. They know how to position themselves a lot better than they previously would. Uh, and now offensively, they, they have a combination of, and, and I saw their game against the Stables. They completely destroyed them. It was short, intermediate, deep. It was just, they forced, stretched that Stables defense in, in every way, uh, lengthwise and width-wise of the field. So they really utilize the the entire, uh, you know, as you like to say, they make sure to cover every blade of grass out there to covering this freshman Excel squad. So they, like, they're they really, we talked about uh, Knights 2.0 in Division D uh, being on a heater and, and hitting on all cin- cylinders. I think freshman Excel is the, the same thing in Division E. Just quick, quick point before we go to LPC Junior here. Um, so freshman Excel have not allowed more than twenty points in six consecutive games. Yeah. So, so the defense is playing well scary. now. Now you look at LPC Junior. Uh, they yeah. got some uh, artillery to work with, right? You look For at sure. uh, the quarterback Alex Manets, who had a phenomenal year, right? QB of the year. QB of the year. Fifty-one touchdowns, five ints, right? You look at the receiving core that they have had. Laurent Beauchamp had a marvelous year, along with Jason Reyes with ten uh, TDs as well. This is a team that's no slouch. Look, I know we can talk about and dissect, oh, it's the, you know, immovable object against the unstoppable force, right? It could be that. But if Maness gets going off early and gets completions, gets into the zone, gets into his rhythm, you know, I always use the baseball pitcher reference. If a pitcher throws strikes early, they're locked in, they're, they're in the zone. Then you can't disrupt them. So it's awfully important for a freshman Excel to really stick to what they've done really well and, and not deviate and not try to gamble, play within your strengths. But this LPC junior team has experience. They've they've had guys who've gone deep uh, and with the LPC yeah. uh, senior team, and now here they are with this junior team. So I don't think this is going to be a, 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 a game that's going to be a blowout. I think that's highly doubtful. No. I think what it'll come down to is mistakes, which is penalties, if there are any penalties in this game. Converts will be key. But who could for, force that mistake that can go in favor of points for whoever it does that? If that happens, you stole in a possession away and you're making that team, whether they're losing, to chase you if they're trying to win that game at that point. So I think Keys will be playing clean ball and who can be smart in how they apply themselves on both sides of the football. Yeah, and if it ever does come to a convert game... Um, look, uh, LPC much more efficient with their converts. If I just do a quick calculation, we got around 16, 18, one point converts during the regular season and a handful, about eight, two point converts. So 18 and eight versus freshman's excels, eight, one point converts. So 10 less and four, two point converts. So you're looking about half the, the, the success rate from uh, freshman Excel over Le Petit Carat and 37 interceptions from Le Petit Carat Jr. That's something that freshman Excel haven't necessarily faced. They're going up against the best defense probably in Division E. They, they've never really had a challenge like this. Uh, but all that being said, uh, you know, in praising Le Petit Carat Jr., you thought or I thought maybe at least that they would wipe the floor over Team Timbo. Team Timbo no. took this team to overtime. 
I had Timbo winning that game, by the way, because Timbo was the really? hottest team coming in Division E. I, I told uh, Tim Horner, I said, Tim, I think you guys can pull it off. He goes, really? I go, I go, Tim, like, think about your team and what you have. This isn't going to be an easy game for LPC Junior. I really thought they would pull off the win, and they almost did an overtime in Brosser last week. Yeah. So Yeah, they, they almost did. So, look, I, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. Uh, this 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 is another one that could go to overtime, but because of the convert game and what we've seen from the regular season, that it's slightly tipping the scales towards uh, LPC Junior. One quick point before we get to the next matchup here with Toon Squad against Baby Sharks. Fresh Mixel play off emotion. Yeah. Remember that. They play off emotion. They love the vibe of what they bring from their fan base and from their sideline. Yeah. And you know what's going to happen, Iggy? They're going to take this clip – Put it on their Instagram page, and then if they if we pick against them and they win, they're gonna play the skip over and over and over, yeah. and you know how they're gonna do. It. Anyway, okay, two okay, squad. They get to baby see sharks. more. They get to see more of uh, our faces on the uh, on of Instagram. Of course, they love it. Yeah. They love it. All right, baby sharks, two squad. Um, look, baby sharks, man, they they're hot. They are on as you said a heater for our other previous game before, and they have been playing great football late here. Eggs. This is a team. That has not lost a game, I believe, uh, since May 27th. Oh, and I think no, they lost in. Uh, oh, yeah, I, no, they 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 lost to freshman Excel. Uh, oh, right, 9th. yes, June 9th, June 9th. So because I was there, I remember. Right, that. so so they've not lost since June 9th. Okay, but but the reason why yeah. they they are exceptionally is is Jeremy Laplante and what he's done in the playoffs. Like, he has been an absolute, absolute surgeon on the football field. Uh, you think about what he's done so far. He has thrown for 17 touchdowns, three INTs. Um, and that excludes the backyard against game, which was a forfeit win for them. So he could have thrown even more than what he's done so far. Simple, right. simple mathematic formula here for Toon Squad. You stop the head of the snake or the head of the shark. The great white shark in Jeremy Laplante, you're going to win this football game. If you can't stop him, it's going to be a long day for the Toon Squad defense. Well, who's who's the great white shark here? Is it Jeremy Laplante or is it Max Sharkawi? Right? Sharkawi. Like, uh, I mean, 179 playoff receiving yards, four touchdowns in two games. Uh, Sam Ertz, six TDs, 124 yards. So I mean, who 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 exactly are you are it's, you stopping? It's Laplante. Right? It's, it's Laplante. But but on the flip side, though, right? Not to describe two squad. This is a team Mickey, that had over twenty five ints during the regular season, and they had twenty five sacks with Jeremy Steinberg. So yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Like you take out the head of the snake or the head of the shark and Jeremy Laplante, you're gonna win this football game. It's a simple formula for two squad on the week, on, on Tuesday night in Brossard. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if if you start getting, you know, early sacks and, and create third and fourth and long situations, maybe even have them punt, right? Because in Division E, yeah, they don't go for it as often, you know, fourth. Like, it's not necessarily a just keep going for it and uh, play a possession game. Yeah, uh, Defenses do get stops more often in Division E, so punting is more of a normal thing uh, in, in, in Div E. So, yeah, if they start getting in his head early with, with uh, Jeremy Steinberg, 25 sacks, like you said, during the regular season, push force that team backwards instead of moving forwards, uh, yeah, you, you start getting in his head and, and shooting down that confidence. Uh, like I saw, back, it, it was back on June 9th. That's two months ago. But I did see a, you know, and maybe it was also a 10 a.m. game. But still, I saw a less confident Jeremy Laplante, and it didn't look great. Again, two months ago, so he's he has picked up a lot of confidence since then. Um, and the other side of it, it's it's basically going to be a quarterback battle between Jeremy Laplante and and Chaz Presser, uh, ex scorekeeper of uh, of FPF here. He knows his game. He's he he's seen a lot. He's picked up from Division A, Division B, Division C. You know the whole nine yards. And he's a much better quarterback than than what he was last year, and uh, if if not, you know, two seasons ago, uh, that that he's been playing quarterback now, it, playing in co-ed three, he made it to the semifinal once again, not going to the final, but all those reps, you know, he he had better. Uh, 
made a great impact in the quarterfinal game defensively and all around. He had three interceptions in their quarterfinal victory. So it's really going to be, you know, who can chop off the head of their leader uh, first, Jeremy Laplante or Chaz Press. Yeah, C. Press is, is really improves the quarterback. Garner Ross is my guy still. I love Garner Ross. I think he is the, <laughs> he is the face of the franchise. Like they should build a statue of Garner Ross for the, for the Toon Squad uh, uh, offices, <laughs> wherever their football operations is held. I don't know where it is in Montreal. But if, uh, if C. TMR, Press... probably. I don't know, wherever it is. But um, if C. Press gets... You know, he's really improved. Like, he plays co-ed as well as a quarterback. So his reads have gotten much more deeper in, in taste of what he looks for from a passing options out there. And if he gets that going, right, and th- that defense, defense can play as well as they have, had done so, or have done up until now, it just makes it easier for him to, to really win that game. But don't discredit Baby Sharks, though. They have a good defense to themselves. But we all know the storyline yeah. will be Jeremy yeah. LaPlante and what he does. If you take the head of the shark, the head of the shark off, Two squad can win this game and head to the finals on the weekend as well. So we'll see how that plays out moving forward. All right, eggs on to the five on five. We have one more game left in the five on five, um, which yeah. is going to be played on Tuesday night uh, as we get it for that. And uh, that game is going to be flag must sack or I'm blooming now. Now. So this is, this is a compelling matchup here because they yeah. had a good game. Um, I believe it was, Two, three weeks ago, July 15th. I was there for that game, which Flag Mossack won by six. Um, perhaps in the eyes of Royal Luminaire, there were some calls that did not sit well with them. That in, uh, in terms of the application of what it was, of whether it was a handoff or not, if you're allowed to do so, whatever it was. So now here we are, five on five. Uh, Dallas Zara against Alexander Pews. That's going to be fun to watch. But I'm looking at the supporting cast of both teams and, and who's available to be had. The question now comes up in the five on five game here is can you minimize your mistakes for, for the offenses out there? And how do you play the clock? Because you, we've seen it in the five on five men's edition. It's massive. How the two minute warning becomes almost 10 minutes because you control how that clock, how that clock, not cock, clock <laughs> expires <laughs> down the road. Yes, yes, it happened. I get to oh, I, oh, it's over, Mo. It's over forever. I, That's fine. Oh yes. That's fine. Oh I, my God, we're gonna put this. This is going everywhere. This is this will be on the alliance. It's gonna make. It's that's gonna make national news. It's it's gonna be on TSN six ninety radio. It's, That's it's, fine by Jimmy, me. Jimmy, Jimmy. Jimmy G is going to be all over this. It's how you control no, the clock Jimmy, in the last Jimmy two G, minutes. Jimmy G would, the, would, would bleep it out anyway. Knowing Jimmy, in the like, last two minutes. I don't know. Oh, man. Uh, Ig- all- Ignacio, I don't know. <sighs> no mo, No mo. It's no, all how you control the cock in the last two minutes. Here. <laughs> exactly. Uh, like, exactly. Like who... I say, it's, it, who's going to tr- control the cock more? Is it going to be Dan Lazara or, or Alex Nadopius? Exactly. Anyway, so <laughs> that two minute window is gonna be key in yes. who wins this game yes. on the weekend on Tuesday night. Yeah, uh, the, the the thing I've noticed with five v five, a stop by a defense is not the end of the world. It's not like six on six. Even you can get stopped three times in the five v five game, and it's not game over. Yeah, the fact that yeah. you can score so quick, the fact like you said with the the pro clock edition. Uh, with the time stopping on a whim and it was so so much in the control of the offense uh, with the two timeouts per half and ev- and everything you're right. never out of a game a two possession game is not this like or, or a two possession deficit is not the same uh, as it is in the six on six game because mm-hmm. you you can only get eight dry eight uh, tries on a drive it's right. not like you can extend a drive 16 plays deep right you can only get it a, a four to the half four four to the end zone so there's only like about three minutes that you can really kill off a clock so um you know that that just being said now if we get you know in, into the actual matchup uh i, I saw the royaume luminar uh playoff game and dan lazaro looked locked in 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 that game it was uh first half uh they again they, they got stopped a few times on the goal line uh, but they didn't let it affect them, and and uh, when 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 they needed it, they they came up clutch, got the scores that they party crashers despite 
a great interception by Gene Zia Alexi on a on a deep ball from uh, from Dan Lazara. Sometimes you may have seen that you know get the emotional best of him. He he oh, yeah. stayed locked in 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 that game uh, and and ended up getting the victory. So uh, and for Flag Moi, they've just gotten better and better as and more acclimated in the 5v5 style. I think a lot of these teams have. We're going to get to the <laughs> the Jamesons coming up with the probably the upset maybe of the decade, but definitely of the season. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a sec, but it's, it's honestly, everyone's gotten better at this game. They've gotten acclimated, like I said, to, to the rules and the style and the, the game planning and the, the, not just the game planning, but the, the game management portion of the game. Um, and Flagmo have always been a great offense and they're starting to piece it together as well. Yeah, and you mentioned the, the win over Braves for uh, Jamesons, and, and that's a massive win for them because everyone thought Braves were going to run through it and get to the finals and, and give them the first five versus five men's trophy in league history. That's not the case, uh, and now Jamesons are in the final. Um, I know we're going to talk more about it on Thursday's show, right? But right now, this before we'll make our picks at the end here, who's a better matchup for Jamesons? Just one one answer here. Is it Fimo Sack or Royal Lunar? Uh, I, I, you know, it, I'll answer, I will answer, but I think that a team with, that can compete with them size wise and, and speed wise, I think is the worst matchup for them. So I think, I, honestly, it's kind of both. The answer is kind of both, but I think flag moi might be the worst matchup for, uh, for Bray, uh, for okay. the Jamesons. Okay. Fair but enough, honestly, fair. it's both uh, like Royaume. And Flagmois have both of that, right? You think Francois Rochelot, does anyone have the speed necessarily to keep up with that on the Jameson side? Same thing for Royaume. The the speed, uh, I mean, Kwesi is your fastest player, doesn't always play full time offense. Um, they may not they may not have that speed factor, but they they have that size and boxing out ability of with guys like Marc uh, Marc Antoine Lapointe, Jesse Dupuis. They have that physicality to meet uh, to bang and and beat up uh, and stay competitive with uh, with Jamesons. All right then, all right. Um... The, let's go quickly perusing through the other divisions. Division A, we have our final set. DA Braves against Pride Crashers. Uh, Crashers win over uh, Mangoose by three, which is probably mm. an upset in some eyes. And DA mm-hmm. Braves hammered uh, Bless 56-34. Um, again, we won't preview that game till Thursday because there's a lot of talk about the stir lines here. But how surprised were you that Crashers literally crashed the party, crashed the party without apology, and beat Mangoose, which took us away from a rematch from the Winter Div Two final between Braves and Mangoose. Yeah, I mean, I I got there halfway through this game, and uh, no, actually not this game. No, I didn't see this game at all. But I I heard from Chris Ribe, our cameraman, social media expert here at uh, at Flag Plus, uh, that this game was like insane highlights. So hopefully he's going to create a, a nice package for the FPF community uh, from all these games. Uh, there was uh, Nick Schaefer was abusing the post uh, to Vincent Antil uh, time and time again until Jeans Lee came up with a, a massive interception. Jeans Lee as a quarterback throwing off his back foot with Thomas Kutsu rushing, barreling down on him. And Jordan Sin Alexi coming in with a one-handed sideline tiptoe catch. Uh, I can't wait to see the highlights. Uh, but it was apparently high, plenty uh, of big plays uh, from both sides. Uh, eventually, the look, statistically, uh, it, it, it's kind of shocking how Nick Schaefer and Mangus lost this game. With just again purely statistically, 292 yards, five touchdowns, one interception versus the 173 and two interceptions from uh, Jean Zli. Both had five TDs. Well, where am I seeing like the the uh, the convert so game essentially wh- was was the difference? What it is 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 we, is your classic boxing match where the box is winning in points, and the one chasing the the box match comes up the knockout blow. That's what it pretty is. much. Pretty much that pretty was much. it. All right, Braves. Uh, we're not surprised by Braves. I mean, this this is a game that they had easily done against Bless. They whipped them by 22 points, no five plays in this game. And and look, you know, the Braves, they're, they're a pissed. machine. 
They were yeah, pissed. They were. That they they were, lost five v five. Yeah, you know that that's something that they've not that they're chasing right now. But you know they they smashed Bless, who they only beat by two during the regular season. But now they have a point to prove. They they want to win silverware, and they don't want to be empty in this season here. And they'll get their best chance against party crashes. But you're right. Can that anger spill over into Sunday where they want to lay a statement on? party crashes i think they have the horses here eggs to, to do so after what they did to bless yeah i mean i do also think that party crashes have the horses to do some damage against the da braves but uh an upset or like emotional and and um, angry da braves is and joe Mayer is a very dangerous uh, DA Braves. So, right. Uh, they're, they're, party crashers are going to have to come out with their perfect game in order to beat them. Div B, Infantry winning over one stop by 12, 30 to 18. And ECW winning over Kiss Men Loss. Sorry, Eggies. Eggie by a score of 47 30. Um, Infantry has been picking it up, I, I found, in terms of their season. Uh, they, they got off to a bit of a slow start. Where yeah. they weren't like I mean it, it it was not I must say in the loss column but I'm just saying in finding their flow right because they lost you guys back in week three I think it was um, week one week and, two and they lost at one stop uh, in week three as well so they lost like early in in late May and they lost three in a row in fact uh, at that point so they weren't playing their best football at that juncture they were two and three and they've been undefeated since then and you, you look at the quarterback play that they've had so far this year. Um, they might have found the right one for the time that they look for in their season and what they've done up till now. And that's Sir William Power, what he's brought to them as a quarterback. And Royce Smith has played really well. They have a good flow here, Iggy. They, they, I think they have a good uh, flow with what they've done so far. And to beat a one-stop yeah. team that has played some excellent defense by two scores is quite impressive in my books. And not only that, this game was 12 nothing for one stop. Following that, they they only accorded six points to them. Uh, six point. I think they shut them out in the second half. If we uh, quickly go to uh, to the box score, so uh, a tough start for the infantry in this game. But they were a resilient group, especially defense. Yes, they shut them out in the second half. Uh, only allowed eighteen. Well, only they uh, only allowed six uh, after a twelve nothing lead that one stop uh, got off in this game. Uh, and you know William Power, uh, another what? What is that? A, a twenty-two of twenty-six. His his completion percentage is off the board. He, it's it's back-to-back games. He's converting and completing eighty-five percent of his passes. He his lowest QB rating is a hundred and eleven. Back on June thirtieth, his playoff QB rating one forty-four, one thirty-two, a hundred and thirty-nine total. Uh, he's 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 found the perfect mesh. With this uh, squad, uh, of the four quarterbacks that the, this team had, uh, you you can argue that G- Jeans Lee was probably may maybe the best out of them, maybe. But William Power is the best one for this receiving core, and the style of play just match just perfectly. They they fit like a key in a in a lock. All right, Kiss Men Laws getting ripped by Easy W forty seven thirty. You threw three, three INTs, Ziggy. What a way to end off your division Terrible. B career. Um, Easy W, like uh, they're peaking. Jeremy White when he's on, man, yeah. only two incompletions, seven TDs, one INT. Uh, when he's on, man, he he's unbelievable, and he didn't have to use his legs in this game. He used all arm uh, nope. to power his way through against you guys. Oh, no, no, no. They, they were hands down the better team last night. I completely shit the bed. Uh, they, they were the better team. Kudos to them. And, yeah, easy, for Easy W, hey, look, they're coming off uh, Div 3 championships. Uh, of course, uh, Alex Barros was part of that squad, has kind of gone MIA. I think he's out of the country. Uh, but they've done a formidable job replacing him, right? They've added uh, Fritz uh, Senatsus. Uh when when you have on ones on the same side Fritz and Nathan Desjardins, it that that co- almost completely eliminates one side of the field. And when you do have uh, Etienne Laurent Gervais in the three, and the way they they shift their defense, uh, honestly they have a they they have a very methodical defense, uh, one that will give up yards, but will come up with timely interceptions and and uh, and great team play. 
and that's that's what EZW has has come from Division E from like the, I think it was spring 2018, spring 2019, and look at them now all the way in Division B making another finals. Like I said, Division Three winners, man, Division Three winners to potentially Division B winners. That's a very nice run for Jeremy White and his crew. I right, co-ed won. Oh, uh, an emotional win for you, Iggy. Like you won like fifty million dollars in in the Powerball Absolutely. lottery in the U.S. Uh, winning on the last play over IG team and pass whooping win over Easy Fun by four on, on. Essentially, it was the last play for Easy Fun, but couldn't score. Okay, so Iggy, um, big win over IG team. You get pass whooping yeah. here. We'll preview that on Thursday. Yeah. But how massive was that emotional win for you guys outdoors in Laval? Uh, to come up on on a trick play to win over your uh, forever rival IG team, it was uh, so yeah exactly. I think you you summed it up perfectly there. Forever rival, honest honestly, best best rivalry that I've been a part of in my FPF career early on in my career. So I'm going back 2017 and uh, winter 2018. It was looking like a Sunday Touch Boy slash Honey Martin against Ben McMahon. Funny enough was looking like a uh, a nice rivalry and and it, that went up until like winter 2022 but this IG team kiss my end zone both teams had won two playoff games before this meeting this was the tiebreaker IG team had won the first two on their way to two championships kiss my end zone had won the last two on the on the backs of a fall championship a uh, bowl cup per se Mm -hmm. uh, and have now won and now won three in a row uh, in this game in particular uh, we're completely neutralizing my two point attempts so like you said I had to pull uh, you know the cat out of the bag see pull off something they hadn't seen all game uh, to come up with with the <laughs> with the clutch play, I, I I predicted a man defense. They actually didn't go man. I didn't realize it. Uh, <laughs> I, it looked like I looked like it looked like man to me. Uh, and uh, look, dropping back, uh, beating the rusher. And if you didn't notice on the play, my flag came off. So I was down by touch. If I was touched anywhere near or before the goal line, uh, obviously on the goal line, like I was. I'm pretty sure I was touched on the goal line. At, or, or just crossing it. Uh, but GZ was very close to potentially winning the game for his side. Uh, look, it was a game of uh, timely interceptions, uh, timely stops. Laurie Willette was massive in this game for Kiss My End Zone. Uh, Amélie Zurocher was massive in this game for Kiss My End Zone when the guys were massive in the, the vic playoff victory against Plenty of Fish in the quarterfinals. It was now the females' turn to step up. Lori also had two touchdowns, one interception, so she was the MVP for Kiss My End Zone in that one. Uh, and if we just quickly move it, turn it over to Pass Whoopin' and Easy Fun, again, like this Easy W squad, Easy Fun, May maybe like the one of the best five man or five player rosters out there. They beat Vultures in the quarterfinals and took and gave everything they they uh, they could give uh, to pass whip and only winning by four points. Uh, and by the way, their se season turn when they were down nine points to you guys at halftime in Laval and they came back yep. from that game. They've not looked back since then. And this Absolutely. is the um, Joe Notaro Larry Willette Bowl game with you guys playing them with those two on your roster. Yep. Former pass women players. Yeah, exactly. There's a, a lot of nice storylines in that one. Like you said, uh, Lodi Willette, Joey Nataro joining the, uh, the the blue side, uh, trying to get the best of uh, Chris Rive. There's that, uh, you know, the season series is tied at one. So it's uh, somewhat of the, the rubber match. And you do have uh, Iggy Magnet's administ uh, FPF administrative uh, resource versus Chris Rive, the uh, the Instagram. And oh, yeah, that's, that's, media where, that's where like, the angle between <laughs> the administration members of this league here. Like, that's what we're looking at right now. Oh, yeah. That's what we're looking it's, at here. Uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway, it's pretty uh, fun. It should be a good game here. Uh, I can't wait to see one of you guys lose on Sunday. That's gonna be fun to watch. Uh, Coet two uh, upsets galore. Kamikaze taking out Fit Squad by seven. Rookies winning at the death by one over Cavaliers. Uh, bigger surprise and who they lost? Fit Squad or Cavaliers? Yeah. So just to make sure I'm a hundred percent back because I did drop for a quick second there. Yes, you did. Um, look, given. Given the circumstances and the context 
and it has to be the Cavaliers losing. Not only did they lose, they lost to a rookie's team that had five players. So I was talking about easy fun, maybe being the best five roster team. The rookies looked very impressive after the Cavaliers were pounding them early on in this game with highlight reel jukes. Um plays left and right the rookies very resilient group playing very hard and very aggressive on defensively as they should have from the beginning uh, they were super impressive getting the victory with just five players so to me everything aside Cavaliers is the uh, the bigger disappointment here especially because fit squad doesn't necessarily have their QB and Brual. Yeah, I think Cavaliers, you know, bad loss, Architects slowing downfall. Fit squad, you know, it's a, it's also a loss of the loss, but they've been playing good football and, and they went quietly about their business. And But, you know, full props to the rookies are going to the finals against a uh, win over the Cavaliers. And Kamikaze, a team that's been sort of laying in the weeds a little bit here, have how they've gone about with their business this season. They were 5-5 five and five during the regular season. Not the most impressive run for them, as we saw but they put together a, a, a display of a body of work of dominance where Iggy, when you think about it right now, their last loss, I believe, uh, came on June 9th. They wow. have not okay, lost a game June. since June 9th. This is Kamikaze. Yeah. I've not lost a game since June 9th. They beat Nighthawk Night, 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 Hawks mix by six. They beat uh, Los Bolas Profundas by 18. They won against Christmas Christmas Balls by 18. Uh, they beat pick six by uh, 27. Seven. Uh, they beat LDM by eight, which is an upset one for them because it means that LDM would have been in the finals. And they beat Fit Squad here. So they've gone on a run here, Eggy. So they might be yep. playing with momentum going towards Sunday's final. Now, the interesting thing, and you know, we'll preview it uh, on Thursday more, but the interesting thing from really from both sides. Like I mentioned for Idaho Udipims, the injury to Alexi Ferran and the fact that Charles Vero is going to be throwing for the rookies and not Cedric Modis. Just right. a little preview for our Thursday uh, show here on Calling the Audible. Okay, uh, co-ed three, Bondi went over La Sec by two, a thriller, and Block Party hammering one niners by 20, which is a surprise to many out there. Um, Bande, block party. This could be a, a headliner box office game with these two teams, but uh, both yeah. have had came out with wins in different fashions of how they won their games respectively here. Yep. Uh, block party just annihilated one and Niners and just drowned them in points, much like we saw during the regular season matchup. One and Niners can score, but they can't score. F- they can, but it's very tough for them to score 50, whereas Block Party, we've seen it from them on some occasions. So for them to score 52, uh, and, and I, I almost think this is the same scoreline as, as the regular season. Uh, I'm not too surprised. Uh, Chaz Presser would have had to have had a perfect game. Uh, Block Party just had exactly that. They they had a, a perfect game here. As uh, Yvonne Solomon, we've, we mentioned it, his development has been great. And seven touchdowns, uh, no interceptions, seven incompletions, and and then n- not just 139 passing yards, but 92 yards on the ground, one TD. They had one in Niners had no answer for him on the ground. No one had a sack. Uh, you know, five plus three, eight tackles. It means the the tackling wasn't there. The, the there was no pressure from the rusher in this one, which whichever way it was, there was Luca Cainville or or, or someone else on, on one of the Niners. Um, block party smelled blood and uh, and just poured down the points on one of the Niners. It seems. All right, Women's Day. We got uh, Sub Zero against Cayenne. So we knew this was going to be the case. Uh, Cayenne, a bit tricky game against Matrix, but they didn't have Sandrine, uh, uh, who at quarterback. Um, right. Again, we'll preview that scheme on, on Thursday. But uh, this is the matchup that we expected to happen in Women's Day. I think we can both agree on that front. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? That's it, yeah. There's nothing more to talk about. We can't really, I mean, you know, the, the scheme against Matrix was a bit of a wash because of the situation that popped up that you and I both know. Right. So, in, in hindsight, it should have been a forfeit win, which in theory would have been, but they won by five. But I'll say this, though. Cayenne. Oh, Jesus. What happened? Oh, your dog. Nah, oh, yeah the, 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 yeah. the Bangkok specialist, Leo. Only with, uh, hello, Leo. Only with you. 
Only with me. Hello, Leo. Um, this could come out to the last play. But we'll talk more about that on on uh, Monday sh- yeah. on Thursday show. Okay, yeah. so the women's B was definitely the the more it's been the more compelling storyline. I'm, I'm sorry for the women's A. We we know what's going on here because we had upsets, right? I mean, Hibu took out Supernova yeah. by five, which was a great game to score keep, and the boys up in the Red Nation by ten, a bit flattering of the scoreline because the boys were up by three scores at one point, and the Red Nation kind of went on a, on, a, on a run late, but too little, too late here. Um, bigger loss for who? Supernova or Red Nation? I think given the opponent, I think uh, I think you'd have to say Red Nation, right? And and I say given the opponent because maybe this is still preseason expectations and and early early season uh, what we saw early out from <clears throat> Le Boys, which wasn't great. But this is a team that has improved immensely over uh, over the season as soon as. Uh, Caroline Moquin Joubert took over as quarterback. Mo, you you were mentioning it, and you yeah. you've seen it on a couple occasions. Yeah, that turned the front, that turned the season around for uh, Le Boys for the girls, and they they've just been riding that wave ever since. Yeah, and by the way, when they played Red Nation during the regular season, they went head to head. They split their games where the boys won by eleven, and they lost by two Red Nation. So it wasn't like it was a blowout here for Red Nation against them. But I'll right. say this though, uh, Caroline Moquin Joubert had a Amazing game, like she she ripped apart uh, the Red Nation defense at times. This doesn't go. On, I know Elsa Sobel threw two ints. Okay, fine, but it wasn't her fault. Like there was drop balls by receivers, and Sobel played it as best as she could. Like those numbers that she had would win you games nine times out of ten. What was costly for Red Nation was her defense looked like Taurus out there, and and Kellen Mokin Jobert was able to exploit. You know, some players like Key Allen Beckles looked like a Taurus on some deep balls that went for touchdowns. And that shouldn't happen, right? And and they were eyeballing her, the quarterback, than the play itself. And and they got sloppy. And and that's where I think it really hurt Red Nation that they weren't they had too many loose anxiety screws that weren't tightened up in the key moments. And the boys, Iggy. They are on a momentum ride right now, and they deserve to be here. It's unfortunate for a nation because they had a phenomenal year. They they went eight and two. Iggy, I believe they'll still be the favorites to, or one of the favorites to win women's two in winter twenty twenty four if they don't play in, in the fall cup. But you know, it's an empty feeling for a nation because the stars were aligned to win spring season in women's B. Now Ziggy does not hear me. Oh, Iggy crashed. It, so there we go. There you go. I, 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 I was, I thought you were playing to my, to, to, to the whole uh, delay here, Iggy. But I guess you can hear me now. I guess not. Iggy can't hear me now. So as I set up Iggy for the, for the smash, he does not come up with the finisher here. But we'll get that corrected right now. Uh, Omar will have that corrected as Iggy will be back on with us. Iggy looks a little perplexed. Iggy. Yes, I can hear you, Omar. Not, not. Oh, you can not hear me, but hear the producer, and Omar. So we'll get that corrected right now, as we'll get that organized right now with a women's B. So again, we have the boys that will be in the finals. They are going to be heading out to the women's B final that will be played Monday, and okay, they will face a good team in Hibu, who had a good game against Supernova. Emily Adam has been great. She's been calm, cool, collected in the pocket, and had a really good game in the red zone against Supernova. And then when you look at this team as a whole, their defense has been great. They have been locking down opponents for quite a while here. Hibu only gave up 18 points to Supernova. You think about how much they've given up. They gave up 16, a 14 to Le Petit Miet in a thriller in overtime that they won, uh, 25 to Le Petit Miet in the last game, but they've given up 12, they've given up 13, they've given up 6, they've given up a shutout here. And so they've played really well of late as uh, we hope to get Iggy back in the next couple of seconds here as he gets his uh, his headset organized as we move forward here. But again, Hibu has been playing really good defense, and that could be the key as you go up against Caroline and Molkan Joubert, who we'll get on. We'll talk about that game on Thursday's show. Iggy, can you hear us now, my friend? Yes, I hear I'm back on. Yes. All right, Iggy. So I was just saying about Supernova and uh, yep. um, Hibu. Defense yep. has been the calling card for Ibu all yep. s- second half of the season. They played very well. Um, so they 
they really showed a lot of character in, in their two playoff wins that they've had so far this season. Yeah, against Pitsimiet and against Supernova, right? Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. Uh, they they only allowed 14 and 18 points. That's uh, some serious defense, especially yeah. in the 5v5 game, yeah. For sure. And this quickly, Red Nation, I don't know if you hear my point about their defense not playing well. Did you hear that point, yes or no? Uh, I think that's exactly when I cut out. Right, I was saying that you can't blame Allison Sobel for the loss, even though she threw two INTs. They're, they're bad balls right. that were... Not bad balls, but they're balls that, were, that went through the hands of the receivers. But... They look like tourists in their defense. They didn't have the same defensive domination that they normally do. A lot of loose anxiety screws. Yeah. Like they weren't playing good. And and Mokan Joubert was able to slice them up like open heart surgery out there. And Key Allen Beck was unfortunate guy exploited and got torched for two deep balls for touchdowns. She was watching the quarterback, not the play, and got exploited for two big plays. And that kind of opened up the dam. The scoreline's a bit flattering, I think, Iggy, because they won by ten. It was a three score game at that point, or at one point in the game here. But, again, if you're Red Nation, I still believe they'll be the favorite, if not one of the favorites, to win Women's 2 in the winter season if they don't play in fall uh, coming up in a few weeks. Okay. All right. That is it, my friend. That's it? That's it. We're done. Is that everything we did? We're not forgetting a division? No, we did every division. <laughs> oh, yeah. C, D, E, we previewed. We everything. did A, B, yeah. We did the co-eds. Yep. Yeah, we're good, uh, man. Yeah. Women's A and B. Yeah. yeah, we're good, man. Okay, so that will do it for us this show. We have one more to go for the season. And uh, that'll be it for Iggy. And probably for me as well. We'll talk more about it on Thursday's show. Uh, magic words, please. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll be on on Thursday. Those are my magic words. All right. Good night, Jamaica and track and field. You lost by this much against the Americans in the 100-meter race fight. Alright, good night.